girl Shalane. I'm back today with another video. In today's video, I need you guys to check your cards, check your cards, check your cards because there's a lot of money out here. Now, we also have some updates on Pandemic EBT for some states. Then we're going to talk about the cost of living adjustment or increase for SNAP this coming October 1st. That's right around the corner. We have disaster snap. We have it all, okay? Today is going to be a long one. So grab a snack. If you want to know what is going on in the lovely world of EBT, you already know what to do. Stay tuned. Your girl's got you covered. Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey, friends. My name is Shalay, and here on this channel, we discuss shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family. Super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below when you're in, just like that. And if you are an EBT recipient, or maybe you're not, and you don't have Amazon Prime, you guys can try it out free for 30 days. All you have to do is click the link in my description box, or I'll also have it in the cards as well. Now, let's go ahead and kick things off in funky South Carolina, where they made y'all wait uh, five months for $120. Now, guys... These are not my words. As you can see, I have it. People were going in on South Carolina. But from what I'm hearing is that the $120 has arrived to those that reside in South Carolina. Now, also according to the internet, Kentucky has updated their website to reflect they will not be issuing benefits on September 30th. But the state says now they will pay out at the end of October. And Iowa, they are sending out 240,000 school age kids the benefits they should be in your mailboxes by October 4th as well. Now, this is according to the department, but they also want to remind people that the following people are not eligible for summer pandemic EBT, and that is non school age children in childcare, virtual school students for the 22 23 school year homeschool students for the 22-23 school year, and then virtual students who were dual enrolled as well. They said, don't be calling us, right? Because we don't have any money coming to you, okay? So tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you qualify or you in one of those, you know, requirements, you're not getting it, your money in Iowa. Now, Indiana also updated their information as well where the Department of Family and Social Services said that they're about to stop and put it into the replacement pandemic EBT cards. So we know that the funding for pandemic EBT cards, it ended on May 11th in conjunction with the federal public health emergency. We had talked about this, you guys understand, right? But now in Indiana, they said that they're going to consider all issuance as of September 22nd, but the benefits are not usable without a physical card as well. So pandemic EBT card replacements, they will no longer be accepted as of Thursday, September 28th. Any pending requests for replacement cards, they will be completed as of Friday, September 29th. No additional replacement card requests will be processed after these dates. So if you think you qualify in Indiana, you might want to go ahead and get on it and see what's going on as well, especially if you haven't received anything. <laughs> All right, guys, real quick, sorry to interrupt the video, but if you are still waiting on a card, make sure you check like social media because a lot of people are receiving cards and they don't know how to get them to the rightful owners as well. So as you can see, several of these people have stated where they have four different cards, but they don't know how to get them. So also check like different forms and just see because somebody else may have your card. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this increase because SNAP recipients, <laughs> y'all about to eat better tonight, at least in 2024, right? You are about to get a bump on your benefits beginning October 1st. Now, according to a report from Forbes Advisor, they said the SNAP benefits will increase by 12.5% for 12 months starting in October compared to what you guys received last year. So I'm going to go ahead and put the amounts on the screen so you can view and see how much you are being increased as well as the monthly income eligibility has changed as well. So for the 48 um, states as well as D.C. and anyone who makes less than every month the numbers, you will qualify for benefits as well. So they have also increased the amounts for people to qualify for SNAP. So, hey, 
Let me know how much are you going to get an increase on. Next, we are headed to New York where food stamps have left thousands of families hungry. So right now, New York city officials left tens of thousands of families waiting for much need food stamps, as well as cash assistant benefits, according to the advocates. So they said only about 39% of food stamps or even SNAP benefits were processed in a timely manner during the past year for the city. Now, this is according to the mayor's management report, and they released these numbers last week. So, hey, you know, shots was fired, right? Shots was fired. Human Resources said, look, we are taking aggressive action to fill the critical vacancies. We're also trying to invest in technology and implement process improvements to improve the timeliness according to the audit. So a judge in July, they had like a preliminary injunction and ordered the city to have all their backlog and everything issued by March of 2024. So they said all benefits for children, they need to be processed by December 30th of 2023. So I don't know if that helps you guys, New York, but as of right now, they have until December 30th to process your benefits. And then also they have until March of 2024 to go ahead and get that backlog caught up as well. All right. So let me know what do you think down below. But next we are headed to Hawaii. Aloha. So the Hawaii Disaster Snap Program, it launched on September 18th of this year as well. Now, the Hawaii Department of Human Services, they have launched their Disaster Snap where you can actually start applying from September 18th through September 23rd as well. Now, this is for households that were directly impacted by the August 8th wildfires as well. Approximately 16,000 households may not normally be eligible under the SNAP program as well as like their income rules and requirements, but now they may qualify for disaster SNAP. So according to the mayor, they said after a month of the fires, people still will need help with basic needs and this new federal assistance will help ensure that they can put food on the table as well. So he said, look, we'll continue to work to bring every possible federal resource to Maui as we support its long-term recovery as well. So I'm happy to hear this. Now, DHS has been working closely with the federal and community partners to provide like disaster relief as well as food support through like their programs as well. So if you are in Hawaii, now remember when it comes to disaster SNAP benefits, if you are already receiving SNAP, you don't qualify for disaster SNAP. But Disaster Snap, it is an important program that will help those that were impacted by the wildfires on the road to recovery, ensuring that they have food on their table. Eligible households, you can receive one month of benefits, which will be equivalent to the maximum amount of benefits that would have normally been issued to a SNAP household based on your size as well. So if you go back and look at some of the things that I have put on the screen, you can see what you would get. Now, households, remember, if you already are on SNAP, you're not eligible for this one. And also in Florida, they are doing disaster SNAP as well, where the officials are opening up their food assistance support for families that were impacted by Hurricane Adalia. Now, the agency will start to implement their disaster SNAP benefits on September 25th. So we still have a few days as well. All right, so speaking of new proposals, dietitians now are looking to get healthier food options such as vitamins in SNAP benefits. So remember, there's so much going on right now with the farm bill, which they don't have together. But a lot of people are saying SNAP doesn't always have the healthiest food options available. And a lot of people are hoping that they can change that. So now everyone is just putting their input on what they would like to see in the farm bill, including the dietitians. And they would like to get vitamins and other supplements that will help people where they can use their SNAP benefits to purchase these items to help for their health benefits. Now I'm going to give it to you. I like this one, but I am a gummy girl. I love to buy vitamins. If you go check now in my kitchen pantry, we have about eight different bottles of vitamins. So the dietitians they do have where you can register on a website and sign your name like a petition. They're also asking you to contact like your congressman and tell them that, hey, try to get where we can use our vitamins or be able to help 
um, our SNAP benefits be able to help us purchase those vitamins, especially like to have access to vitamin D, which we all know that plays like a very important role in many functions when it comes to your immune system, your mental health as well. So, you know, you can just take a gummy, right? <clears throat> but let me know which you guys purchase vitamins with your EBT or no. Like, let me know if this is a thing because I'm just saying, I would be one to do this, but I'm also the girl that has elderberry and omega-3s and all this stuff because I just don't like taking a whole pill. It's just something about it, but I'll chew a gummy all day long and probably eat more gummies than I should. Let me know down below what do you think and do you like gummies or not? Next, we're going to discuss how Uber Eats will start accepting food stamps for grocery delivery in 2024. So anyone with an EBT card that disperses funds, food stamps, whatever you want to call it, you will now be eligible to use those funds to pay for grocery delivery services through Uber Eats starting 2024. Now, the app will not only accept EBT, but they will accept the FSA or the Flexible Spending Account Cards or even flex cards that you can get through programs like Medicaid, uh, Medicare Advantage plans. Remember, we talked about these flex cards where they were saying like you can get $900 in groceries. Yeah, well now you can use those cards as well. And they're saying like, look, we are online delivery service. We can have a meaningful impact to reducing barriers to fresh groceries, especially, especially for like the vulnerable populations such as like seniors or people that may live in food deserts or people that are just even disabled and have transportation barriers as well. So let me know, would you be ordering from Uber Eats in 2024 to deliver your groceries? Next, we are headed to Puerto Rico where they are advocating for food security and to end the tax breaks on the island. So they believe that the Hurricane Maria as well as Fiona and the pandemic made it clear that Puerto Rico over-reliance on food imports have left many families vulnerable right now. So once again, Puerto Rico is trying to get some outlines in the farm bill that will just even set a legal framework for agriculture as well as food policies in the United States and territory. So the people of Puerto Rico, they are asking for access to SNAP benefits and they want it to pretty much run the same way that it runs here in the United States. So I'll keep you updated on that. But we are headed to Michigan where they are now focusing on fraud prevention, detection, and they received a $750,000 grant. So yeah, the USDA has awarded Michigan $750,000, right? To go ahead and help prevent, detect, as well as investigate any SNAP fraud. So I'm telling you now, you don't want to take anybody's card in general, but definitely don't do it in Michigan, all right? Now, this grant will be used to implement new best practices to prevent SNAP fraud. Um, it will be done through new technology like forensic examiner software, updated hardware, and to help detect like these cyber crimes that are connected to SNAP benefits. So they're like, look, by taking this grant money, this will help state officials guarantee that the benefits are going to those who need it the most and they're going to prosecute you. They're going to find you. They're going to prosecute you. They're going to do what they have to do because they're not playing with y'all, all right? I don't know if you guys seen where a butcher just got indicted for $10 million in snap fraud. They are coming for you, okay? So this is what we have going on in snap world. It's a lot. I'm still looking for some updates when it comes to the farm bill. Let me know what do you think about being able to purchase vitamins on your snap are you going to get a lot of money when October 1st comes? I mean, you know, that is an increase as well. Also, are you still waiting on your funky $120 from your summer EBT benefits? And remember, guys, that is not my wording. That's exactly what was expressed. But, I mean, let me know your sentiments. Was it just a funky $120 or did it work or not? Like, let me know all the things down below. Grab you some Amazon Prime. And as always, please... Like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.